All right, we're back to asynchronous functional programming. I'm Daniel, and in this video, we're going to dive into more complicated examples, and we'll learn to use futures in a truly functional way. All right, so let's imagine that we have been chosen as the backend designers for a mini social network. Of course, this social network needs to hold millions, even billions of users, so everything needs to be done asynchronously. So, for the purpose of this mini social network, I'm going to design a small case class. I'm going to call this simply profile. And I'm going to uh, give it an ID for uh, internal representations in this uh, social network. So let's say this is a string. And the name of the actual person whose profile this is. And uh, let's uh, implement a small, very useful method called poke which was uh, an incredible feature back in the day in the social network space. And uh, this receives another profile, which is of type profile. And let's assume that this uh, does the amazingly um, useful thing of printing something to the console, saying uh, this, just interpolate uh, this name, uh, poking, the other person's name. So other profile dot name. Okay, so this is a user's profile. And uh, in our little social network, implemented as a singleton object because it doesn't make sense to uh, instantiate this multiple times, we are going to do the following. We're going to assume the social network has a database of profiles held as a map. So you just say val names equals map. And let's just put in some profiles here. Let's say we have, and let's say we have an ID in a very technical sounding string, like fb.id.1-zuck, something like that, for uh, the guy that we already know. And uh, the name for this person is just Mark. Let's uh, put in another one, fbid.do-bill for Mark's good friend, Bill. Um, a dummy, like fbid-0 dummy for a dummy profile. With the commas in between. So that should be it. Let's consider the database as containing a bunch of users. And let's also contain a map of friendships. So let's call this friends as a map. And uh, this map will hold the IDs of the profiles, which are very good friends. So let's say we have our little guy Zuck is a good friend of our good guy Bill. Right? So a bunch of users and a bunch of friendships. Let's also use a random number generator, which will uh, generate some uh, sleeping times for our operations. So assuming the social network, when it tries to fetch a profile, it does some computation and uh, will simulate that by sleeping a random number of milliseconds. Now let's assume that our social network has an API consisting of two methods. One to fetch a profile, profile by an ID, which is a string. And this will return a future of type profile. So this will return a future which will hold a profile at some point. And the implementation of that is going to be future. And inside, I'm just going to do a long computation by sleeping, of course. And let's just say random dot next int 300 milliseconds tops. I don't want to wait too long. And we are going to create a profile out of ID and names apply to ID. So assume this simulates fetching from the database or from some other machine or from some other kind of protocol that results in a profile, all right? And the second method is fetch a best friend. 
of a given profile. And uh, this will also return a future profile. And uh, we are going to instantiate another future with thread sleep. Let's um, random next int. And let's say this is a 400 millisecond operation. A profile is, of course, of type profile. And um, let's call this best friend ID. So we are going to fetch the best friend ID from the friends database, which is friends with a profile dot ID. And this will create a profile out of best friends ID and names of best friends ID. All right, so we have a social network with two potentially expensive API calls that will return a future with a profile. Now let's assume that in a client application, we want Mark to poke Bill. How would we do that if the client called an endpoint in our application? Well, we would create a future by fetching Zach's profile, then fetching Bill's profile by Zach's best friend, and we would then call profile with Zach poke profile with Bill, all right? So the way that we do that is let's use a future. Let's call this, instead of Zuck, let's call this Mark, which is social network fetch profile. And uh, from the client application, assuming we have the ID already known. So this is a future with a profile. Now, we know how to work with futures, right? So when mark future is complete, then I want to fetch Bill's profile by calling a social network fetch best friend with Mark's profile and then do the poking. So we're just going to call mark.onComplete. And I'm going to put in some cases here. So case success with some mark profile, then I'm going to do the following. I'm going to create a bill future as social network dot fetch best friend with mark profile, and then the call bill dot on complete. So case success with some bill profile. Then we would say mark profile dot poke build profile and uh, case failure with some exception. We'll just uh, use the print stack trace or something. And uh, same for marks future. So case failure with some exception. We are just going to use exception print stack trace. So we have our little code. But the indenting seems a little off. Oh yes, because we've declared our mark future in our little on complete code at the same level with the members for the social network. So let's bring that outside and make sure that this client code sits outside the social network. All right, so we have a nice code here. We have a future which is obtained by fetching the profile from the social network. And on complete, we are going to fetch the best friend for that profile. And when that completes as well, we run our useful little code. So let's put another thread sleep here uh, in the main thread so that we make sure that the uh, futures from the social network have time to finish. And uh, let's right click and run this so we can see what happens. So we have our previous futures and uh, we see mark poking bill, which is a sign that our nested futures have completed. All right, so this is all nice and correct, but it's also very ugly and unreadable because we have some nested futures and nested on complete calls. What if we had some more complex scenarios like a banking system or online shopping or some other kind of more complicated distributed computation? we cannot really reliably and sustainably write code by uh, nesting on complete callbacks like that. Besides, our only piece of useful code is this guy, which is right in the thick 
of this little code. Another disadvantage is that this best friend here, Bill, is within Mark's scope, so we can't really use it outside. So if we write code like that, we would incur an incredible technical debt in our social network implementation and in uh, client applications as well. Fortunately, there are better ways to do it. And uh, we are going to start talking now about functional composition of futures. First of all, we have the big three, map, flat map, and filter. Let's go through them in turn. Map transforms a future of a given type into a future of a different type. So if I say, for example, name on the wall, which is uh, Mark's name. If I say Mark, which is a future of profile, and I map it with a lambda that from a profile turns that into a profile.name, then from a future of profile, I'm going to turn that into a future of string, as you see here. Now, if the original future happens to fail with an exception, then the mapped future will fail with the same exception. All right, let's give an example of flat map as well. So if I say um, Mark's best friend equals Mark flat map, and given a profile, I can return another future. So we can say social network dot fetch best friend with profile. This is how we obtain the bill future here. So this will transform a future of profile, which is Mark's profile into another future of profile given this lambda. And as an example of filter, we can say uh, Zuck's best friend restricted was Mark's best friend filter and given the profile within Mark's best friend we can say profile name starts with Z or something like that. So we can filter a future with a predicate and it will return a future of the same type or if the predicate fails this future will fail with a no such element exception. Now, having map, flat map, and filter, of course, we can write four comprehensions, which look really cool. So let me give you an example. If I say Mark is a future obtained from social network fetch profile with our little Mark's ID, and the bill future obtained from social network fetch best friend from Mark, then I can say Mark poke Bill. And this looks so much cleaner than this complicated nested on complete callbacks above. So you can read the for comprehension as given Mark's profile obtained after completing this feature, given Bill's profile obtained after completing this feature, then I can do this thing. Of course, we can have yield as well, but this is just an example. Now, let me prove this code runs just as fine with this for comprehension instead of all these uh, spaghetti codes that we wrote earlier. So if I comment this thing out and I moved the thread sleep after running the for comprehension, if I right click and run this again, I should be seeing the same result in the console. So waiting on the future, the meaning of life is 42, and of course, Mark poking Bill. So this is the recommended approach of doing asynchronous computations with future. Use functionals, map, flat, map, and filter, and four comprehensions whenever you get the chance, plus some additional utilities in case things go south. So let's talk about fallbacks. One fallback path is called recovering. So say for example, I create social network dot fetch profile and then I pass in some unknown ID. Fetch profile relies on this ID being there in the database. So if the ID is not known, then this will likely throw an exception within the future. And we would like to recover our future with a dummy profile in case there is an exception or throwable being thrown inside our original future. So the way that we do that is by saying, let's call this a profile no matter what, equals social network fetch profile with the unknown ID, and the method is recover, 
And as an argument, we pass in a partial function with an exception for a throwable. And this guy should return a profile. So we can say profile with the dummy ID, like FB ID zero dummy. And the name of this guy should be like, for example, forever alone. All right, so in case the future fails with an exception inside, then we can recover that by returning a well-defined profile. So a profile, no matter what, will certainly contain either the real profile returned by this future or the profile returned by the case clause here under the recover. Now, for the case when we don't want to return a profile itself, but to fetch another profile from the social network, we can use, instead of recover, use recover with. So let's say a fetched profile, no matter what, is social network fetch profile the same guy, and instead of recover, use recover with. And this will take another partial function, which in case of a throwable, instead of a profile, we'll fetch another profile from the social network. So say social network dot fetch profile, and uh, we are going to pass in an existing ID in the database. Now, in the case that the second future also throws an exception, then yes, tough luck. But uh, we use this pattern in practice with recover with to return a future with arguments that we know for sure or with high probability that it's not going to cause the resulting future to throw an exception inside. Now, another pattern is falling back and we can achieve the same result by saying val fallback result equals the same thing, fall back to the other future. Now, this will create a new future based on the following logic. If the original future succeeds, then its value will be used as the value of the resulting future. If it fails with an exception, then the argument will be run. And if that succeeds, then that value will be used. But if the argument also fails, the exception of the first future will be contained in the failure of the uh, resulting future. Okay, so in this part of the lesson, we have learned how to deal with futures in a truly functional way. And in the next part of the lesson, we'll learn how to block on futures and how to manually manipulate futures with promises. I'll see you in the next video.